Welcome back, I'm Lee Blue, and I have been building websites for local businesses for over 20 years. And now I'm passing everything that I've learned onto other web designers who wanna build their own six-figure web design businesses just working from anywhere with a laptop. I can help you land clients. I've got a mentoring program called DoubleStack, doublestack.net, which you can work with me right there. Um, today we're gonna to be talking about our entry-level marketing plan that we offer local business clients. Now before we jump into it, one of the things that's really, really important, probably, probably the most important, is to know who you're trying to attract, like to know your niche. And if you want to, you can go over to the DoubleStack website and I've got the first module of DoubleStack out there totally for free. In fact, I just updated it last week and you can get it for free. I'll put a link in the description for that. And it'll help you do two things. One, it'll help you pick your niche, but even more important than that, it'll help you develop your impact hook. Your impact hook is like that one sentence zinger that you say that just tells people who you work with, and how you're different from just the garden variety web designer. It's huge for getting leads. You can get that lesson for free in the link in the description. It's called the authority framework. You'll see that down below. Okay, so today we're gonna to be talking about our entry level marketing package for local business clients. And it's a $5,000 annual package. It's got a $500 setup and a $375 per month monthly plan associated with it. So altogether, it's worth $5,000 per year. 375 times 12 is 4,500 plus the $500 setup. $5,000. This video is going to be about the setup part of that package. The next video is going to be about the monthly plan. So don't forget to subscribe for that so you're notified when I launch the video about the $375 per month monthly plan part. But today we're going to be looking at the setup and it's just two things. It's the Google business profile and a one page WordPress website. And we're going to look at how to get all of that stuff set up today and it starts with the Google business profile. So you got to claim and verify your listings. So if you don't have the Google business profile, I'm going to put another link in the description on how to claim and verify your Google business profile. So once you do that, then you go to business.google.com and you will be in your Google business profile dashboard. And then you wanna click on the edit profile button because there's a couple of things that we wanna set up in the Google business profile that, so that we can use that information on the website. And the first thing that we wanna set up are the primary and secondary business categories. So you'll see an example of what it looks like right here. We wanna make sure that your primary and secondary categories are set. You can sometimes add more categories, but sometimes this is a situation where, where more is not better. We just really want two. Um, so go ahead and set these two up for now. And then also make sure that you have your name, address, phone number, and hours are all set up properly in the Google business profile because we're gonna use that information on the website as well. So once you have all of that configured in your Google business profile, then join me over here and I'll take a look at the website and I'll go through all of the information that you need to put on the website for this one page $500 setup. So here's the website part of the setup. It's a super basic design. I just put this together really quick just to kind of show what could be done. It's not so much about the design, it's all about the content. So right off the top, I've got this logo up here. And one of the things that I do to get logos going super cheap is I'll just go over to Adobe Stock and I'll type in whatever the kind of business is, like auto glass and logo. Or sometimes what I'll do is I'll type in the initials of the logo. Like if I was gonna do this one, I would like for auto glass pros, I might do like AG logo or something like that and see what comes up. But I just went ahead and licensed this image here. And then I deleted the text and put my own text in there and ended up with this logo. Now, one of the things that I did though, was I kind of chopped it in half and then I put words <laughs> on the other side. And the reason that I did that is because, if, I don't know if you can see, but up in the corner, I want the site icon to look like that and it's best if it's square shaped. So, uh, so anyway, that's where the logo came from. The entire purpose of this website is to get calls, whether it's people coming directly to the website or linking through from the Google business profile. So the main thing that I want people to do is just call the business. So I make sure the phone number is everywhere. So I have the phone number up here. And then for the heading, this is an H1 tag. I take the exact primary category description from the Google business profile and put that right up here as the H1 tag. And then below that, I'll have the location in Williamsburg, Virginia. And I'll throw in some extra keywords and stuff that people might search for. And that's the heading. And then I have this button here, which is a, an actual click to call button. The way that you code that up is you just type TEL, you can probably see it down in the bottom left corner. It's TEL colon, and then the country code, which in the United States is plus one, and then just your regular 10 digit phone number, no spaces or parentheses or anything in the link. And then if you're on mobile and you actually click that button, it'll call, call people on the phone. And if you're not on mobile, or if you don't wanna click the button, you can just dial the number right there. 
So, uh, so that's what the header is. And then when we scroll down to the next part of the page, we have your one-stop auto glass shop. So this is an H2 tag and I'm taking the secondary description. So if you go back into the Google business profile and you look at your descriptions, the top one, the primary description goes up here or the primary category goes there and then the secondary category goes right there. And that way you're duplicate. See, there's like synchronicity going on between the data on the Google business profile and the content on the website. And then once again, I put in more keywords that people might be looking for with regard to repairing auto glass. And I also say where we're serving Williamsburg, Virginia and surrounding areas. Now this next section where I have these three different services, these would be the three services that the business offers. And if there's more or less, it doesn't really matter. I just put them right here in a grid. Because what I'm gonna do eventually, I'm not gonna do it now because this is just a one page getting started website, but later on I'm leaving the door open to being able to put read more buttons down here so I can set up individual service pages for each of those services. And that way we can get some SEO love going to each one of those individual pages. So that's pretty cool. But for now, I'm just telling the person that we have these three different services, here's how it works. Um, if that's what you're looking for, then we've got you. And now I've got the about me section or the about us section. And what you're gonna notice here is I have all the content of like the traditional five page website, but I just smushed it all onto the same page. So it's just a one page website. And so what I've done here is I've written the name of the business. So that's across the top. And then again, I repeat the name of the business. And then I tell people who the owner of the business is, where the business is located, how long the business has been around, where they're serving people, like all, like I'm putting a lot of the same information in here again, and I'm also driving people to actually call. So one of the big things is calling us, and again, with the click to call button. And the ideal is to have a picture of the actual business owner here. So for the sake of this demonstration, this is, an, this is a stock image, but what we wanna do is try to get the business owner in the photo or even the team in the photo because I want people to see who it is they're actually going to work with. And it's easy enough to just, hey, you know, go stand in front of something that's not too busy, like a brick wall or something like that and take an iPhone picture so that we can put that right there. Then the next chunk is testimonials. So I'll copy in some customer quotes or testimonials or something like that, put that right here. And then I will link to more reviews on Google. And then below that, so this is actually linking back, back to the Google business profile. And then below that, I've got this map. And this is not a plugin or anything special. I'm using Beaver Builder for this website, but you can do this with anything because there's no extra plugins or anything. It's just embedded iframes. And it's got, um, and since the demonstration here is for Auto Glass Pros in Williamsburg, that's a, not a real place. I'm just making it up for this example. But there is an Auto Glass Pros in Raleigh, North Carolina, which I'm using as an example for this map because I want to show you that it's really important to make sure that your business name, location, and phone number, and everything is exactly the same as it is in your Google Business Profile. Same thing with the hours. We wanna make sure that everything is exactly the same. And I've seen a lot of people, like uh, a lot of our clients, when I first start working with them, they'll have like different phone numbers. They'll have like a cell number on their website and, and like an office number on their Google profile or, or maybe the address will have like a suite number in one location, but not in the other. And so I just wanna make sure that the website and the Google business profile have identical information for the name, address, phone number, and hours. And the reason for that is I want both people and Google to have confidence that the information is correct. And if it's different information in each location, like if the website says one thing and the Google profile says another, it's confusing as to know which is the authoritative source and maybe neither of them are correct. And then you don't get that much visibility. We've seen people get more than double the views on their Google business profile simply by making sure the name, address, phone number, and hours are the same in both locations. So how do you get these, um, these links and everything? So the way that I did that, I just bopped over. So again, this is, this is Auto Glass Pros of Raleigh, just to show as, as an example. If you search on Google Maps, like just do a search for whatever the business name is, their profile will pop up and then you can just click the share button and this send a link option here where you have this, this thing, you can just click copy link. And then that's what I used for this more reviews on Google link up here. And then if you click over to embed map, you get this iframe and you can just copy all this. And that's what I dropped in here to get this to show up. But in just a second, I'm gonna show you the, um, 
the admin side of this WordPress site so I can show you some other stuff because there's two other things I wanna show you. One is I wanna show you how I got this to actually stretch all the way across the iframe to stretch all the way across because when I first embedded it, it didn't go all the way across. And then the other thing I wanna show you is the local business schema markup, which we've added to the site, which is also really important. And oh, by the way, I had this cool little um, Chrome extension where you can show and hide the admin bar. So I'm actually logged into WordPress right now. And this is the uh, WP admin bar hider, which is really handy because you can toggle your access in and out of WordPress, which is pretty cool. All right, let's take a look at behind the scenes. So here we are in Beaver Builder. And if you scroll on down to the bottom, I just wanted to show you this section right here. And if I go over and click on HTML settings, what you'll notice is I've got this iframe all pasted in. And I got that from over here. This I just copied all of this source and pasted it over in to this little HTML code block. But I added width equals 100% because when I first pasted everything in, it did not have that. And it didn't actually, you know, let's see if I take that out. It doesn't go all the way across. See how it's like, it only goes like halfway across. It looks kind of weird. It doesn't stretch the full width. But if you add the width equals 100%, then it stretches all the way across and looks really nice. So that's all I did for that. The last thing I wanted to show you is how to get the local business schema on the website, which is really helpful for Google to find your website as a local business and everything. I'm using Beaver Builder. There are ways to get code snippets on pages that are kind of natively built into Beaver Builder. But if you're not using Beaver Builder or you just want something that universally works all the time, um, you can use the header footer code manager, which is what I'm gonna show you today to just add the local schema markup directly to the homepage of the site. So it's really cool. I'm hosting all my sites over on SiteGround. Um, I moved over from Flywheel to SiteGround about six months ago, and I love it there, like especially for local business websites. So if you're looking for good hosting, I highly recommend SiteGround. I'll put a link in the description to the exact package I'm using over there. So um, if you wanna check it out, it's really good. Okay, so let's take a look at the header footer code manager. So if you go, once you install that plugin, you'll get this little thing over here and you can set up your local business schema. So I went ahead and did it already so that you didn't have to watch me type, <laughs> and, but I'll, I'll show you what the settings are. So you can just name the snippet anything you want. So I just called it local business schema, but that's just the name, it doesn't actually matter. Um, it's a JavaScript snippet so that you can do HTML, CSS, or JavaScript. This is gonna be a JavaScript snippet. We just need it on the home page. So I selected specific pages. I can type in home and then that's the only page it's gonna go on. In fact, it's the only page on the whole site right now. And it's gonna go up in the header, show on all devices, it's active, and then you just paste it in right there. So then the question comes, well, how do you get this? <laughs> like who writes all this, all this code snippet stuff? Well, the easiest way that I found to do it is you can just use ChatGPT or Gemini. So I decided to log into the free version of Gemini and I just paste it in this prompt. I'll put the prompt in the description so you can copy and paste that. But it's basically just saying, hey, I need your help writing a local business schema for this website. And then Jim and I will say, yeah, I can definitely help. And it starts listing out all of these different things that you need to um, include so that it can write all of the schema for you. And so for example, like business name description, all that stuff. So I just went ahead and did that. And so when I, I just said business name colon auto glass pros and description colon. So whatever it said to put, I just wrote what that was colon and then the actual information it needed. And then when it got down to the hours, I just said hours colon and then just pasted in the hours that the business was open. And then it said, perfect, we'll go ahead and create the thing for you and then it makes the code. But interestingly enough, this code actually has a tiny little error in it. It's right here, it's phone. It's supposed to be telephone and not phone. But it's actually cool because um, once you get the code, go ahead and just like copy the code and then go over here to the schema markup validator. It's just over at validator.schema.org. And for right now, I'm just gonna type in a code snippet. And so if you just paste in the snippet, then you can run the test and you can say, hey, wait a minute, there's actually an error here. And so if you get an error, like sometimes Gemini or Chat, I find that ChatGPT is a little bit better at this than Gemini is, but um, you just copy what the error is and you know copy that so the property phone is not recognized. And then you just tell Gemini, so like I scrolled down here and I said, hey, I'm getting this error. The property is not recognized. And then it said, oh, you're absolutely right. And then it fixed it and says, here's the corrected property name. So you don't have to keep the comments, like anything that has 
these two little slash marks and then that you can delete that if you want, but it doesn't matter, it does, you can just leave it in. But now it's actually correct. So if you then take this and copy that and go back over to the schema markup, you can run a new test. It's a code snippet and just paste that in there, run the test this time, no errors, everything's good. So we're like, all right, let's go ahead and add that to the website. And that's where I got all of this. So then I just pasted all that stuff in. I clicked save when I was originally doing it. And now the schema data markup is actually on the site and you're good to go. Okay, a couple more quick tips. Suppose you wanna speed up the setup process. Well, you can make some blueprint websites, kind of like this auto glass shop site, but for a couple of other industries. So it depends on your niche, right? So check out the authority framework. Let me help you pick your niche, get your impact hook dialed in. And then maybe you're picking home services and you could build a couple of blueprint sites for like roofers and plumbers and electricians. And then when you get your clients coming in, you just spin up one of your blueprints, change the copy, and then you're done really fast. Don't forget to subscribe for the next video where we get into the 375 per month package. And then the last thing is, what about the leads? Like, how do you find some leads? Check out this next video and I'll show you how to get leads for free with an advanced Google search. You're gonna love it. I'll see you right there.